So we made it to the powwow. Wow, I Look at this, that backdrop. We are at the Shoshone Bannock powwow with champion dancer Devin Kiknoswe, who's also my adopted dad for five days, along with one mission in mind, to immerse myself in native culture to learn what it means to be American. So we're gonna set up camp right here and put up a canopy and get it all set up, then get ourselves situated in, in our new trailer. This is nice. To have a trailer. Oh, wow. Look at this. We're set. Woo. So we're so lucky to have this uh, trailer here that was lended by a friend. Excited to, to be living with the family here. I wanted to meet other people, but I was afraid that I didn't fit in. Thankfully, Devin had an interesting icebreaker for me. So this is Mark Yen? Mark Yen. Hello. This is his first powwow. Yeah, he came down, he, he recently got some cool news about his his bloodline. I found out like a, a couple months ago that that I've seen native in me, like my great, great grandmother was a Cherokee princess. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> okay. I was, like, I was trying so hard not to. <laughs> so let's to let you guys know. Anytime this is not to be rude, but this happens all the time to almost every single native that's out there. When a, a non-native comes up to a native person and they're like, "Hey, are you native?" and we say, "Yeah," and then they usually say, "Me too," and we're like, "Really?" It's always my great great grandmother was a Cherokee princess. So now Devin wants me to respond to people like that when they ask me where I'm from and, and get the reaction. In my head I was like, please don't we, say we, Cherokee we Princess. We planned it. See what I mean? I told you. We totally planned all of it. All right, so we're approaching the powwow right now. This is just the day before, so it's kids powwow. It's just relaxing. It's community. Well, hey, how are you? How are you doing? It's oh. good to see you. You're all done up. Yeah. This guy's yeah. remarkable. This, you're, you're he's the man. Company. Can I take a picture? Yeah, man. So one thing we haven't mentioned yet is uh, Devin is from my understanding, one of the biggest champions in uh, in power dancing. Like, how many powers have you won? A few. A, a few, a like few. how many? <laughs> like, give me an estimate. So maybe almost Tell 20, 20 years of dancing, almost placing every weekend. 20 years for every weekend. 50 so. powers, maybe, I don't know, 50 powers a year? Wait, that's a thousand. Let's say a couple hundred. But you've won a thousand powers? I don't know. I've done good, but I've worked really hard. What even is a powwow? A powwow is a dance ceremony and competition split into three days. Today is the kids' dances, tomorrow features adults, and on the third day, Devin has been hinting at letting me dance in his ceremony. I don't know how that's going to work. Can you get your number? Two, six, seven. So Devin, is all of your family competing? Uh, yes. When they hit six years old is when they can compete. This looks like a winner's outfit right here. <laughs> Devin and his family are now getting ready to put on their outfits. I think the kids have their grand entry, which means that they kind of do their opening ceremony, dance a little bit. Looks like cheese. Looking good, buddy. What is that? Uh, otter. Ooh. What are you going to do with that? Uh, you put it on your wrist and dance with it. What feathers are these? Immature bald eagle. A bald eagle tail. I can't help but be in awe of how intricate the outfits are and the plethora of eagle feathers that everyone is wearing. There must be a strong significance to eagles, but I still don't know what it means. All I know is that Devin gave me one simple rule about the feathers at his home. The only thing we ask, yes. unless I give you that permission, is to not touch the eagle feathers because Native Americans are the only ones allowed to possess and hold and have eagle feathers. Yes. All right. You're good. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. You're gonna kill it tonight. So we're just watching Destin uh, dance in the Junior's opening ceremony. This is this is so magical. The sunset is a golden hour right now. Still so many questions about the music, the dance, the outfits. I think I'm gonna save them until tomorrow. It's just so much to take in right now. I realize powwows are more than just dance competitions. They're like festivals with food trucks that we are about to explore. He's been recruited for Bannock Burger. Top-notch burgers, top-notch fry bread, best fry bread in the world by the man himself. He said, why don't see if he can make an Indian taco? Let's go do this it. It's all very new to me. You tell him what to do, boss him around. So I'm gonna learn about some uh, local foods here. We're going behind the scenes. Wow. Thank you very much. All that around you there. Wash the hands. I wasn't expecting you. Hey, this here is dough that we have already rolled out. All you have to do is push it down like that. Push it down and get on this side over here. Put your hand up there. Catch it. There you go. Yep. Now spread it out. This grease is really hot, so when you put it in there, you kind of hold it up and just let it flow. Bread is called 
fry bread. A long time ago, all we got from the government was flour, baking powder, and different things. So this was one of our staples. Okay, there's your fry bread, and you put some meat on it. How's that? No, don't be cheap. We're not starving. Look at our bellies. Tomatoes and onions. Now you have made a bannock burger. That's yours. Yeah, now you got to eat it all. That's a lot. It's like a pizza right here. Here we go. Wow. It's like it's like a pizza dough almost. Wow. It's really unique. I really appreciate uh, you sharing this experience with me. Well, tomorrow's experience will be better. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, you'll see. You'll see. We'll see you tomorrow. Something is happening tomorrow, apparently. So far, I've crafted dance sticks, shot a bow and arrow, and made an Indian taco. Every day is full of surprises. And now, I'm about to share my creation with others around camp. So he's offering anyone. Oh, you want you want you an want Indian a taco? Good oh. job. It looks you beautiful. Want? Is that your son? Yeah, yeah just my son. Yeah. Oh, holy! Like, yeah, yeah. He just came out weird. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, he recently found something out, which was pretty interesting. Oh boy, that's my cue. Uh, well, I took like a little test, and I found out that uh, my great great grandmother was a Cherokee princess. Oh. I'm just kidding. We're just, just kidding. kidding. <laughs> I set that one up. I would was gonna say something, and I thought I better not be rude, because then my daughter will get after me. So I'm, I'm gonna have to say that to them. Very Straight convincing. Yeah. I was like, I, you oh, like, oh, <laughs> how are you enjoying this so far? I'm learning so much. I've done videos with different cultures around the U.S., and like, I kind of know some of them. This one feels like a totally distant culture to anything that I've ever experienced before. Really? Yeah. If you're new to my channel, this is episode 10 of an epic series living with 10 families around the U.S. to learn what it means to be American. I've lived with a Cuban American family, Black American, Italian American, but this finale is by far the biggest culture shock. And I was telling Devin, I feel like my first impressions, it's uh, people have been so much more welcoming than I expected. I thought I'd be a little bit more on edge, but everyone's been so kind and friendly and that's how we roll. We're trying to figure out how to lift this. Yes, proof in case it breaks. The, in case it breaks, this is this what is... happened. I'm sleeping in the trailer with Devin, his wife, and three kids. This really is an immersive family experience, and we need to make some bed space for the kids. Three, two, one. Uh, oh, it moved! Oh, we did it! We got it! Yeah. Hey. We did it. Hey, we did it. Accomplishment Victory. of the day. <laughs> Alright, it's time for bed. Good night, everyone. It's morning. It's about 6.30. He's got to get up because we got to go scrape lines. Hey. You got work to do. We're two hours behind schedule. <laughs> what schedule? Good morning. Devin uh, woke me up. <laughs> 7.30 a.m. We got our clothes from yesterday because apparently it's gonna be really stinky. Yeah, and that, you're gonna know why. Let's go Let's do it. <laughs> I have no idea what to expect. I'm getting ready though. This is leather for clothes. This is leather for clothes, for outfits, and he's gonna go through a whole process of how it's made. Hey, are you recording? I am. <laughs> All right, welcome to the boot camp. It's Robert again! I swear he's a video game character who just pops out of nowhere to give you a side quest. We do the hide check here. And hide is what? Skin? Like a, animal it's skin? A deer hide, yeah. Deer hide, okay. This is our quality. This is, we smoke it with the... Uh... So that's, to me, when I, it's like this barbecue smell, like... Yeah, exactly. That's what Devin's house smells like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this now... Is, this is a natural coat rack. Yeah. You just go out and you, you kill an elk and then it becomes your coat rack. Yeah, these are all deer hides. And they're using it for clothes as yeah. well? Yeah, clothing. Hey, go ahead, show them. Give them, give them that experience. You take the hide like this. Smell that. Yeah, huh? it's a strong smell. Like a, like a, like a uh, zoo or something. See what we do is we'll put them on here. And so what we do is go like this. Yeah, this is literally the almost like the, the, the raw animal. So you work on this for about an hour and we'll be back. Whew, I'm already tired. I'm going until you, until you stop, stop me. <laughs> we will stop you until you fall Yeah, over. until you're just done. Okay, let's flip it over. That's, that's how we clean the inside. How your shoulders feel? 
Yeah, doing that for a long time, that's, that's hard work. And yeah. these are sheep shears. Deer hides are used to make many daily objects like clothes, bags, and accessories. Okay, now let's go to the other part of the business. We grow hemp. <laughs> of course, the guy who makes bannock burgers and sells deer hide also grows cannabis to feed chickens. They know you're coming. Okay, grab some of this. This, okay. is, this is hemp. That, um... <laughs> is this chickens eating weed, or is it more than that? These are hemp-fed chickens. Does it make the, the chickens high or something? It relaxes them. Now it's time to start hunting. So what, are we, what are we looking for? Looking for eggs. It is like Easter egg hunting. <laughs> ah, in my natural environment. Hit a little jackpot over here. That old girl sits on probably five or six. <laughs> She's not gonna do really? nothing. She won't do nothing. Just reach oh. under her. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, chicken. Let me see. Oh, wow. All right. You're right about that. That's your class for today. You learned about hides. Yep. It's a traditional art that was handed down from generation to generation. And not just natives did it, white people did it. Everybody did hides because we all wore them as clothing a long time ago. The reason why I'm doing this series is uh, I want to learn what it means to be American. Because I'm half American but didn't grow up in the U.S. When you think of America, what do you think of? That's a tough one. You know, you can look back historically. First Native Americans were here. Columbus came in and thought he landed on, in India and he called us Indians, you know. My family was sent off to the boarding school to beat the native out of the native, you know, to take away our language, to take away our tradition and culture and everything. For a super basic overview, Native Americans have faced centuries of oppression by European colonizers and the U.S. government, where they were killed and stripped of their culture. In the 19th century, the U.S. created these indoctrinating boarding schools to remove kids from their Native identity and heritage. From the treatment of our people a long time ago has created such a divide in not only our people and America, but our people amongst themselves. You know, we say we're living in America, land of the brave, home of the free. There's no such thing as freedom. So many powerful conversations today. It is uh, around 10, 11 a.m. This is the first official day of the powwow. The opening grand ceremony is at 7 p.m. tonight. Before we prepare for tonight's performances, I wanted to get a deeper insight on the culture through the local shop owners. So we're just walking around the camp right now. We've got the arena over there. Give, I'm giving him all the all the do's and don'ts of how to shop at Palau's. Mm -hmm. You see like the real stuff that like the cookums and people are making. Cookums is grandma, by the way. Are any of these designs uh, not appropriate for non-natives to wear? It's for everybody. We are considered one big Palo family. If I asked you, like, what does it mean to be native, what would you say? Um, just connecting with everybody through the earth, through creativity, especially at the Palos, everybody coming together. You know, we're not just this tribe, this tribe, we're native, you know. What does this mean? That stands for Missing Murdered Indigenous Women. I created this image two years ago. It was for my aunt and my niece that were both murdered and well, missing and they were murdered. Yeah. So there's a high percentage rate of missing murdered indigenous women and, and men that go missing each year. So this is just me bringing personal awareness to that because it hit my, not only my family but my husband's family as well. I'm sure there will be some viewers who watch this and have no idea or no context about native uh, oppression or the way they've been treated or even movements like this. Handprint also signifies um, the silence of it. You know, there's nothing that is being done about it. And if there is, it's very, very little that you'll hear about what goes on. There you go. Oh, it's cool, right? The red? I'm gonna go for it. Okay. There you go. It's been calling me. So I just got this uh, really awesome bracelet. I think what's really special about it is that it was made by these women that you see here. You're, you're willing to give How much are your pants? My girlfriend? Mm -hmm. 40. So 40. This one right here. Wow. Well, God you bless you. Thank oh, you. Thank you so much. They were so kind. They gave these for my girlfriend. Just, they just gave it to me. That's, I'm just so blown away by, by the generosity here. I was touched by how generous and warm everybody was to an outsider like me. I felt like I was part of one big family that welcomed all people. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my
So every Paolo that you go to, you got to register. And then they give you uh, a number. That number is what you're going to use to collect points throughout the whole weekend. This is it, the winning number. I don't know. The winning number. But I could try. We'll see at the end of it if they call this number. Yep. The end of the video will be me running right. up. So right now it's about 2 p.m. The action really starts in a couple of hours when um, they have the dance competitions. As I was watching Devin prepare for his competition, nerves started to kick in thinking of how Devin was planning to get me to dance tomorrow. He's been vague about the details, so I'm not sure what exactly he's going to teach me. What is this that you're putting on? This would be my, my otter, otter hair ties. And as a warrior, if you hunt, you wear your kills to represent what you have, who you are, what you're capable of doing. I'm just watching Devin put on his uh, powwow dancing outfit and it's so crazy and interesting how every piece of clothing and accessory has a meaning behind it. What you wear is almost like a symbol of what you do, where your family comes from, what your family does. How many pieces of clothing do you think you put on? I'm already at 28. And what pieces are you counting, like decorations as well? Like decorations. Is that, is that not a good? Decoration. <laughs> Strike one. Okay, <laughs> correct me, please. Just your, your, just you, your, your outfit. What would you what call parts? like an accessory? Yeah. So these are just plume accessories. So when you move, yeah. you can see the movement in the shoulders. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move my decorations. <laughs> Go grab my uh, dance stick. It's that one that's kind of curled. Okay, and then you're gonna take this, the two strings, and then you're gonna tie it through the end. This is a really privileged position to be in because Devin taught me that non-natives, you know, don't touch feathers unless you're given permission to. So Devin put in his trust in me a little bit. You want it like this, and then make a knot. Just a knot. Yeah. How do you make a knot again? Just like a shoelace, one loop. No, 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 not a, not a bow, a knot. Like this, right? You didn't know how to tie a knot. That's the easiest thing in the whole entire world. I know. Wow. This is beautiful. This is all porcupine hair. You only get about this much of the long hair per porcupine. Oh, so this is a lot of porcupines. This is a lot of porcupines. To me, this is one of the big ones. Like, I've never had a roach this big, so. The sun is setting. The grand entry is about to start. Devin's getting ready. This is when the real power starts. Uh, Devin, I, want to, I was going to ask you, how much do you think your outfit would cost? This is... 7,000. That alone is 7,000? Yeah. You got all the other accessories, so, I don't know, oh. sometimes 15 to 20,000? 15 to 20,000. Yeah. Yeah, designer brand's got nothing on this. Yep. <laughs> Gucci, what? Nope. <laughs> $20,000 outfits made up of pieces gathered by family possessions and community trade. I don't think you're gonna find an Eagle Feather fan in Target. Is that, where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Cedar City, Utah. What's, what's your native background? Uh, I'm Southern Paiute, uh, Oglala, Lakota, and Navajo. What's one thing that you would want non-natives to know about natives? Um, we are still around, we still exist, and we're powwowing every weekend. Oh. Right here, look at us, we're all here. <laughs> yeah. As I was mingling with people, I was pulled into our neighbor's tent to receive a special gift. What's this? I want to give this to you. Um, oh my goodness. What's the first animal you saw? There. This is a badger. Never mind, badger. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> from where we come from, um, whatever animal you saw first is that that's your spirit animal. And so I want to give this to you. This is one of our sacred posts. Misinski. Me Sinski. Me Sinski. Me Sinski. So this is our sacred post. Oh man, what an honor. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> we got this for free at a pawn <laughs> shop here. <laughs> <laughs> they got me, they got me. Uh, you're getting us last night, so got you, you now. You got me back. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> if you could give me the most random thing, I'd be like, wow, that is so special. We'll carry it home. <laughs> I've been, uh, there's been too many ger generous moments that I've been, you know, I automatically think it's you know something generous, but I know I know these guys are trying to get me back. Devin, are you competing tonight, or was that just tonight? I see some some men here who are wearing some really serious uh, outfits. As someone who's never seen outfits like these before, it was a sensory overload. So Devin's getting ready to uh, dance in the grand ceremony. 
What an incredible moment this is, being able to witness a rich culture being celebrated through dance. Although I was very self-conscious wandering through the crowds, it felt very intimate being able to share this experience with Devin and his family. <laughs> things that I'm most impressed by are the feathers. People wear a lot of them. This is it. Devin's out there. He's competing. Looks like there's only two other dancers. It feels like it's the real deal here. Alright, here we go. Take it away, folks. Devin's dance style is called Men's Prairie Chicken, and we'll learn more about it later. Dad did. Yeah, he did well, right? How, how do you feel? You did pretty good, but it's like weird being in seniors because I've always been in juniors, and there's usually a whole bunch of us. There was only what three? Yeah, there was only three. Dads. So weird. So you're definitely gonna place then. Uh, yeah, that means I'm in. Before we called it a night, Devin pulled me into the arena to give me a taste of what I'm going to learn tomorrow. <laughs> got to practice a little bit of the foundational steps and I've been observing how the men move their bodies like a prairie chicken. Two steps on each foot. His inner tribal Five, ten, skills are boys. Quick boys. <laughs> Some of you might be wondering who is allowed to attend a powwow and the answer is everyone can attend including non-natives. Then you might wonder where do I find powwows? Well to our convenience Devin is creating an app called Powwow Trail that shows you all the powwows across North America and I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Good morning, everyone. Today is the day that I will be competing, and I am excited. Today is the final day, and my biggest challenge awaits me. Everything I have learned through Devon in the last four days will be put to the test, and I'm really hoping I can honor this beautiful culture in the best way possible. How is it all going to go down? I still have no idea, and I'm waiting to be taught how to dance. And uh, uh, what we did the day begins. Was we played. 